Hello everyone, hope you're all having a great week. My name is Drew, the host of Never Behind. During the past couple weeks, we had a very rough ride in the market where the S&P 500 went below the 200 SMA or the 200 simple moving average, which was a level that most of the investors were keeping an eye on. If you have been following the interviews on CNBC, you would have heard that the majority of investors were saying that they wouldn't be that concerned unless the SPX or the S&P 500 went under 4200 and would probably still be a buyer. However, if the SPX breaks this 4200 level, they mentioned that they would be very cautious and start to be concerned. Now, if you look at this weekly chart of the SPX, you could see that we have a very strong support level at the 50 SMA, which would be this line here and is right around the 4200 level. This is a level that most investors were keeping a close eye on since it was a very strong support. But last week, it actually broke this level, creating a lot of fear in the market. Now, if we go to the daily chart, although the market has been going up and down, if you zoom out a little bit, you can see that the market has been forming a downtrend since July this year, which would be this black line. As you all know, even if the market eventually goes down, it never goes down in a straight line, but has its up and downs. Now, last week, the SPX went under this downtrend pattern and got a lot of investors worried, but this week it came back up, forming another uptrend. As you can see down here, the RSI, MACD, and the Stochastic RSI has also changed their trends to a positive momentum. Now, the SPX is at a very important level which is the 200 SMA and we'll have to see if it can break this level and continue the uptrend but even if the SPX does break this level we are still in a pattern of a downtrend and there is a high possibility that the SPX can go up to this line which would be around 4300 but may have another pullback now since this is 100% my personal opinion based on my chart analysis please make sure you do your own due diligence before making any investment decisions now since the RSI and MACD are now starting to rise again I personally think that the SPX can rise a bit more, maybe till the end of the year. But again, I'm not confident that we are in a bull rally yet. And I'm definitely keeping an eye on the 4300 level and also trading based on this uptrend momentum to accumulate more cash to invest in the market when the market comes down again. Now, I have started a Discord where a great number of experts are sharing their insights on stocks, swing trades, chart analysis, options, and even cryptocurrencies and is 100% free to join. So if you are interested in becoming a member, please click the Discord link in the description below so that we can get through this tough market together. I also wanted to share that Moomoo is having a great promotion, giving out 15 free stocks, which I think no one should miss. So if you are interested in getting these 15 free stocks, make sure you click the link in the description below. Now let's hear what the experts had to say about the year end rally, either if we will have one or if the market will tank again. Now let's first hear from two of the well-known bull investors in the market on why they are so confident that the market is still in the bullish momentum and will keep rising. And then let's hear from a bearish perspective on why the market can tank again. Now since no one can predict the market 100%, I think it is very important and helpful to listen to both of the bulls and the bears and learn from their rationales behind their opinions. So with that, let's hear what they had to say. If you look at your comments in the past, you've been right. Things have been generally more bullish. But what about the last few weeks? Do you think that we're set up for a year-end stock rally if interest rates continue to show at least some signs that they're stabilizing on the long end? Stabilizing would be very good, I think, Dom, for a year-end rally because we're getting through the tax loss selling. I think the data is going to start to lean soft on the jobs, which I think is good because it takes some of the pressure off the Fed having to do higher for longer. And in fact, it could pressure yields lower. And I think sentiment is so negative now that it, we are in a situation where bad news probably is good news for equity. So I think the setup is good, but this is a, a really critical week. What about this notion that we have interest rates maybe stabilizing and this overall story in the markets about a certain subsection of socks, the Magnificent Seven, whatever you want to call them, being the engine behind the market? Is the fall in yields or hypothetical fall in yields that much more of a buoyant part for stories in the stock market? because of those Magnificent Seven? Yes, I mean, for a lot of reasons. I mean, the Magnificent Seven, as you're pointing out, really powered the equity returns this year. They kind of took it on the, the gut during earnings season, but they're still very good secular stories. And if interest rates stabilize or they start to fall, as we know, that actually has a positive influence on PE. So I think it is, you know, again, I think these stocks lead into year end, but they are highly sensitive to what rates are doing. 
But you asked at the top of the show if you think that, if we think that there's a rally into the end of the year. I absolutely do. I actually think the sentiment is really washed out right here. And whether you're looking at the S&P oscillator, whether you're looking at the fear and greed index, you look at Josh's RSI stuff, it's all really pointing to very negative uh, sentiment. And that's number one. Number two, I think the Fed is done, right? Even if they go one or two more times, they're done. They're basically done. You're in the ninth inning and we're not going into extra innings because I know you were going to ask me that. <laughs> peak rates, I do think that we are seeing peak rates. Look at Look at the bond market, right? Look, look at GDP and PCE um, and ECI today. And we're, it's kind of like in a trading range right now. It's not exploding higher. So I think you're starting to see a peak in rates as well. You add it all up. Earnings are coming in better than expected. Yeah, 25 3% isn't something to get so excited about. But it's certainly better than negative. And that's what people were expecting heading into the, the, the quarter. I am one of the doubters. I've, I've, I've been a doubter even the last time I was here in the set when the market was higher. So um, for us, macro is really like the big headwind that, that markets are facing. Uh, higher for longer, cost of capital being elevated is something that we've been talking about since February. Liquidity is getting uh, sucked out of the system as well, which I think is generally a pretty big and important headwind. Obviously, there's geopolitics that um, you know we can talk about, but that's also an additional tail risk that's very hard to sort of handicap. Fundamentals, to your point, I agree. I I think I see them slowing. They're just not collapsing. It sounds like the crux of your argument is built around the idea that the lag effects are going to be more dramatically felt than people realize today. Yes, very fair. I think there's just a lagged effect. And this time around in this cycle, the lag simply may be longer than what we're accustomed to sort of seeing in the prior cycles because of the unprecedented you know, injection that, that we've got during COVID and because of a relatively healthy starting point for things like balance sheets. For the last year, Year and a half. I think you'll agree the economy's done a lot better than expected. And uh, let's just chalk that up to the lagged effects being a lot more lagged than any of us expected. All right. L l let's just say I give you that and we, we can disagree about the path going forward. But these companies that during this extremely long lag time have out earned and cleaned up their balance sheet. Doesn't that actually perversely extend the lag further from the point of view of they have less debt to refinance, right? I mean, that's that's what we're worried about, at least at the corporate side, is they're going to have to refinance at these much higher rates, except now there's a lot less debt because they've paid down a lot with all the extra cash flow. Uh, is that right? Yeah, I think that's broadly right. But I think that's just one part of the picture. Um, I think for the S&P 500, for the large camp complex, uh, balance sheets are in a pretty good spot. Uh, rates going higher is a headwind, but just a gradual headwind. The problem is, I think, as you move down the cap spectrum, you look at mid caps, small caps, the entire private sector, uh, there's a, a, a more significant portion of that that's, that's, that's variable, that's more sensitive, if you will. Balance sheet is more sensitive to cost of capital. And everything that's happened so far during this call, that increasing headwind from cost of capital, has happened under a relatively healthy where pricing power has been strong and where a lot of corporates have been basically growing, not organically, but just through price. Dubrovko, and, forgive me. Why aren't companies laying off people? I think that's the lagged effect. I think that's a risk that we're facing in 2024. I'll give you one statistic. S&P 500, if I'm not mistaken, which is right, the Fortress balance sheet employs only, I believe, 12, 13 million people. If you look at mid cap, small cap, private sector, you're looking closer to 60, 70 million. And that's the area that's more vulnerable to the macro. Small headwind. caps are in a bear market already, though. Like, like, what if a lot of what you're saying is true and priced in? Where, so, Russell is not the S&P. I think things are definitely getting priced in. But to me, that's a worrying sign. To me, that's okay. a sign not that the yet. market is telling you things are slowing down. We're hanging on to the Magnificent 7, Magnificent 11. All the returns this year are coming from basically seven stocks. So that's telling us. So I think, yeah, we better hope that the NVIDIAs of the world keep just really rolling in very, very strong numbers. The second that that goes, what, what do you hang on to? I actually do agree what this gentleman just said, that the market is where it's at due to the top seven stocks and not only the rest of the companies in the S&P 500, but also the mid and small cap companies are in a very tough situation regarding their balance sheet operations and revenues. So although the market may still be going up, the top seven stocks are keeping the whole market up and we are all expecting these top seven stocks to keep performing well. Now he has a great point where he says that if these top seven stocks come out with earnings that don't match the expectations and tank, then there will be nothing to grab onto in order to keep 
keep the markets at this level and will tank hard. I also thought that it was very interesting where Tom Lee said at the end of his interview that although he is still bullish on the market for the end of this year, he is very cautious that these top seven companies are also sensitive to the interest rates and will have to keep an eye on what the Fed does with the interest rates. So I guess time will tell, but I really think we should be very careful investing throughout 2024. So with that, I hope this video was helpful for your investments and hope to see you on the next episode.